So, AI, it's freaking everywhere. <laughs> it has consumed pretty much every aspect of human life, from art to game development, and it's hardly a surprise that it has been voted the word of the year 2023 by the Collins English Dictionary. And while we all have conflicting feelings about it and the effects it has on our society, it's very, very likely we are all using it to a certain degree. And while I can probably say that I don't use AI at all to produce any of my videos or answer comments, I constantly get trolled about using AI-generated voice in my videos, which is hilarious. <laughs> I mean, I don't know, maybe the AI geniuses have come up with a Balkan dude with an accent who makes grammar mistakes, but if they did, I'm not the one using it. Apart from that, there has been one more case where people brought AI into the conversation when talking about my videos. Last year I made a somewhat controversial video about a hard drive I retrieved from the trash, and that video included a blurred out section of me exploring it and running into all sorts of private unencrypted data someone left on it, and I felt like doing a public service announcement about protecting, erasing or encrypting your drives. But one thing that got people all riled up is the fact that in their opinion the blurry sections I showed weren't blurry and distorted enough and they argued that AI tools can easily decrypt all that information and that I have just leaked it for all to see. And even though I didn't really believe that, just to be on the safe side I've applied additional blurring effects using some of the YouTube's tools and after that people started complaining that they can't see anything. Classic. But ever since that I've really started wondering about that, like is it really possible? And while I indeed have tried some tools back then, I was honestly really curious about exploring this whole subject in a bit more detail. And it wasn't until I got contacted by the folks from Any Recover who asked if I was interested in doing a collaboration with them that my ambition to do more experiments got reignited. And as you'll see, their AI Repair Any Recovery tool is pretty awesome and you can use it in a bunch of ways to unblur your bad photos, enhance the quality, improve the face sharpness and other features. It's also able to add color to your black and white images and remove watermarks or other objects from them. You can also use its AI features to repair corrupted photos and other files, fixing them at a bit level, which is really cool and useful in recovery and backup situations. Speaking of that, they also have a bunch of dedicated backup tools that help you recover lost data from phones, hard drives, SSDs and other devices. And unlike hundreds upon hundreds of tools you might find online, this one really does work and it sure does put in the work as you'll see. So if you like the results you see in this video and you need something corrected, improved or recovered, check the link in my video description. Thanks to Any Recover for supporting me and to all of you who helped me make these videos. Right, so I was always curious about these tools since I've seen a ton of them online and they're very, very clever in how they're able to rebuild the image with missing or corrupt elements. They're particularly good with people and faces and that seems to be what they're used the most for and I guess it does a great job for those ladies who, I mean, have a thing for Instagram filters or they need their um, features enhanced. <laughs> I'll demonstrate how something like this works and I've decided to pull out my Mac Pro Mini I've built recently to conduct a couple of tests since I found this tool works best on Windows machines and I always love when I have the chance to give my new toy some work. After it was all set up I took a selfie and then imported it into Canva which is a tool I use for editing my thumbnails and there's an option to add the blur effect to the picture and I've blurred it by about 30% and it ended up looking like this. Now, depending on the picture and context, this may or may not be enough to conceal the identity of whoever we want to keep hidden, but it's also enough there to give our AI tools something to go on. Let us now boot up our Any Recovery software and we'll run the Improve Quality tool where we can select several options, including face modeling and noise reduction, and you can choose between speed or quality, where one method is quicker but provides less overall detail than the other. In any case, it's going to start chewing through your footage and the processing time depends on the speed of your processor and other components and the higher quality setting can indeed take a bit, but once it's done, you'll be left with a pretty interesting result. Now initially I was really impressed and honestly the stuff they can pull off with AI still blows my mind, but once you start getting into the nitty gritty, you start noticing the differences quite quickly. 
I mean, if you squint at a distance, it really does look like me, but once you start directly comparing it to the original photo, you can see just how much small details have been altered. We're very particular about these sorts of things when it comes to humans, especially ourselves. So yeah, this Schwabek on the right doesn't really feel right. Uh, looks kind of drunk and bloated, honestly. Also, the headphones are missing. I just have weird hair locks over my ears. Anyway, this is pretty familiar if you've seen any AI footage. It's just all a bit off and weird, stuck somewhere in between reality and uncanny valley. But what about some other pictures? Maybe not people, but objects or something. And yeah, I was also curious about that, so I've played around with a photo I took for my last video, me dipping an SSD stick into some coke. Uh, don't ask. And I blurred it out and tried enhancing it with the stool, and I mean, it looked really impressive at first, like massively sharper and clearer. But again, getting down to details and comparing it to the original photo, you can see the guesswork this AI model had to do to approximate something that makes sense. And out of context, it really doesn't look too bad, but compared to the original, you can definitely see the nuances, like the various components, resistors, capacitors, traces, everything. And this tool isn't specifically made for this purpose, but in my opinion, it does a really good job of it, given what it has to go on. And again, it's all pretty much just guesswork, based on how much information you feed it initially. If we, for example, blur the picture even more and try running it through the algorithm, we get even worse results. But we're not talking about a shaky shot here or a slight blur. This is proper distortion and depending on what tool you use, it might be something called a Gaussian blur or motion blur or radial blur or unfocused blur, which you might intentionally get on some camera effects. And one of the things people usually say when you get into discussions about are these things possible to decipher is that you can somehow predict or reverse engineer the algorithm that's applied using, say, a Gaussian blur. In layman's terms, Gaussian blur is a processing technique that uses the Gaussian function, surprise, <laughs> to reduce detail by way of averaging the colors of surrounding pixels. So the value of a given pixel depends on the value of the neighboring pixel, and what determines that is the Gaussian function, sort of a bathtub looking curve which has a certain radius, and the greater the radius, the stronger the blur. And the idea is that if you know or somehow are able to determine these parameters, you're then able to reverse the effect and get the initial photo back. And this isn't just some far-fetched idea, since it's a well-known practice, especially with things like, you know, <laughs> secret services, pictures from space, and other less dramatic but still interesting purposes. And some of the principles applied into making these things work include deconvolution, which is a process of reversing the distortion by finding the correct point spread function, which in case of a blurred out image is often impossible. So what the software does is a procedure known as blind deconvolution, which basically uses an approximative algorithm. One of the most famous one being the Richardson-Lucy and Wiener deconvolution algorithms. And there are indeed tools you can play around with to try and reverse or at least inhibit the effects of blurs. In particular, one of the older ones is Smart Deblur by Vladimir Yuzhikov, uh, which is not only based on several deconvolution techniques, but also implements something called the Fast Fourier transformation, which, I mean, is another way of transforming a frequency used for, well, all sorts of things, from music to images. With this tool you can see just how many variables there are when you get to the details, and it's certainly not the matter of just clicking one button, but really, really fine-tuning all the parameters. You can see that you can not only choose the type of distortion, but also change the radius of the Gaussian curve, as well as fine-tune the gradient and do all sorts of different stuff. The result? Well, it's marginally clearer depending on how much you tweak things and how close you get with your estimate, but yeah, I don't think my fake Google account information is getting leaked anytime soon. That being said, there are other tools intended for specifically making text clearer, and they work on more or less the same principle, but instead of focusing on features such as colors and the gradient of pixels, they tried their best to assume the lines and curves of, well, letters. 
And let's just say that some of these tools do better than others with, well, mixed results. And as soon as the picture is distorted enough, these problems get harder and harder to solve. Now, going back to my initial hard drive discovery video, yes, there were some people who claimed that I haven't blurred the image enough and they could in fact read everything, but what was actually happening, they've noticed a couple of unblurred frames of video that I just didn't get in my edit because I was negligent. And I'd hazard to guess that's the number one cause of people cracking these things, because really one frame is all it takes, and it really is the user error of whoever does the blurring itself what makes it easier to crack the codes, which is probably true for most stuff you try to keep secret. So to answer my question of can AI tools break hidden passwords and uncover FBI documents? Well, it's unlikely, <laughs> although entirely possible, but it's not nearly as easy or foolproof as some people would let you believe. It's not like a simple unblurring tool that you can universally use in every single case, but rather much more specific and in-depth. But that's absolutely not to say that you should be careless. Quite the contrary, if you do have information that you want to keep hidden, blurring might not be the best choice since you might be leaving quite a bit of data on the table for AI to tinker with. Some people recommend mosaic algorithms since they seem to randomize the bits and pixels into an unrecognizable pattern, but I've come across some studies that claim to break even those algorithms. So, I mean, even if it's not as elegant, the safest method is probably just blacking out whatever you want to hide, be it a face or an important password. So yeah, that's pretty much all I have for you today. Hope you enjoyed this episode, maybe you've learned something, and I've certainly learned a lot about algorithms and AI. These tools are mighty powerful, and again, check out Any Recovery if you like what you've seen in the video, and also if you'd like to support me. You can also do that via Patreon, you'll get early access to my videos and I usually have a couple for my patrons to see first. If you'd like to chat with me and other users, you can join our Discord server. All the links will be in the video description. If you liked this episode, feel free to check out some of my other stuff, I do all sorts of nerdy tech videos every week. Thanks and I'll see you again soon. Cheers!